Patience. Definitely my father's child. Uh, but I am probably the complete polar opposite of Melvin Franklin Sr. Renowned as an American-based singer, David Melvin English, affectionately known as Melvin Franklin or Blue, achieved prominence as a pivotal figure in the Motown singing group The Temptations, contributing significantly from 1960 to 1995. Regrettably, his illustrious career came to an untimely end due to heart failure, marking his passing on February 23, 1995. While Melvin Franklin left an indelible legacy in the music industry, his personal life, especially in the role of a father, was not devoid of challenges. Melvin Franklin Jr., his son, offers poignant reflections on their relationship, revealing nuances that transcend the public persona of a musical luminary. Jr. recounts that, despite his father's remarkable era in the limelight, the paternal aspect of Melvin's life was marked by complexities. Melvin Jr., in a candid exposition on his YouTube channel, delved into the intricate dynamics of his relationship with his father. Recounting the poignant day of Melvin Franklin's passing, he shared that, at the time, he resided in a group home in Carson, California. Following a typical school day, he sought solace in the company of friends, engaging in the nostalgic practice of watching afternoon cartoons, a bygone tradition that once permeated after school schedules. The day my father died, I was living in a group home in Carson, California. The ordinarity of the moment was abruptly disrupted by an unforeseen announcement during a commercial break. Breaking news of the demise of Melvin Franklin, the esteemed bass singer of The Temptations, at the age of 52. The surreal nature of the revelation struck Melvin Jr. profoundly, amplifying the emotional impact. Notably, Melvin Jr. expressed the rarity of his encounters with his father, having crossed paths only a handful of times throughout his life, intensifying the unexpected emotional complexity of this significant loss. Never considered the fact that my father could die without me having the opportunity to unite with him. Subsequently, Melvin Jr. delved into the profound sense of abandonment that characterized his familial relationships. Estranged from his family, including his mother and father, he found an unexpected refuge in the camaraderie of a gang. This newfound support system became a source of solace, introducing him to experiences like his inaugural drink and smoke, serving as coping mechanisms for the pervasive loneliness he endured. Unexpectedly, a pivotal moment emerged when David Ruffin Jr. contacted the group home, signaling a departure from the isolation Melvin Jr. had grown accustomed to. This phone call proved to be a game changer, as no one had reached out to him since his arrival at the group home. The unforeseen communication culminated in David Ruffin Jr. expressing his intention to pick up Melvin Jr., offering a departure from the institutional setting that had defined much of his life. Mr. DRJ. David Ruffin Jr. tracked me down within hours. Released from the confines of the group home, Melvin Jr. found himself thrust into a situation where he attended the funeral of his father, Melvin Sr. The experience, however, unfolded in an unsettling manner, as the inherent strangeness of mourning someone with whom he had minimal acquaintance loomed large. Despite the complexities of his familial history, Melvin Jr. shared a remarkable perspective. Expressing forgiveness towards his father, he went on to characterize Melvin Sr. as one of the greatest individuals ever. This reconciliatory sentiment in the face of a tumultuous past underscores Melvin Jr.'s capacity for understanding and the resilience that has defined his personal journey. Diving into the life and career of Melvin Franklin, we uncover a journey marked by musical brilliance and personal resilience. When discussing the influential figures within the musical realm, the prominent names of David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks often take center stage, particularly due to their roles as lead vocalists in The Temptations. However, the substantial contributions of Melvin Franklin, another integral member of The Temptations, tend to be somewhat overshadowed. Franklin's significance is not only confined to the realm of Motown music, but extends to his birthplace, Montgomery, Alabama, where his name is regrettably infrequently acknowledged as a historical marker.
In contrast to the prevailing emphasis on civil rights activism in Montgomery, with notable figures such as Nat King Cole, Rosa Parks, and Ralph Abernathy taking the spotlight, Melvin Franklin's multifaceted talents and unique voice often go unrecognized. His vocal prowess, characterized by a magical blend of gentleness and formidable power, distinguishes him as one of the preeminent bass singers in the annals of music history. Whether performing as part of a group, a choir, or within a multitude, Franklin's resonant and deep voice unfailingly emerges as a standout feature. It is imperative to recognize that Melvin Franklin's legacy extends beyond the confines of mere vocal prowess. His role in shaping the musical tapestry of Motown, alongside his fellow Temptations, is undeniably noteworthy. Franklin's contribution is not only confined to the artistry of his vocal delivery, but encompasses the broader impact he had on the collective sound and success of the Temptations. Renowned vocalists with a wealth of experience frequently underscore the seamless harmony that Melvin Franklin brought to the group, particularly in complementing Eddie Kendricks's falsetto voice. Beyond his musical prowess, Franklin's amiable personality has left an indelible mark on the collective memory of those who had the privilege of working alongside him. His affable nature ensured that his presence was synonymous with vibrant and engaging moments, establishing him as a figure universally beloved. Melvin Franklin's endearing personality was not confined to his musical contributions, but extended to the very core of his being. One could never harbor animosity toward this gentleman, as his likable demeanor radiated warmth and charisma. His heart, both in size and metaphorical depth, mirrored the resonant pitch of his voice. It comes as no surprise that he earned the moniker of the heart of the Temptations, serving as the adhesive force during the Classic Five era. In the intricate tapestry of the Temptations' dynamics, Melvin Franklin emerged as the glue that bound the group together. Each member harbored deep affection and respect for him, recognizing his pivotal role in maintaining cohesion. His humility, often overshadowed by his vocal prowess, manifested in his steadfast commitment to never overstep his role within the group. Remarkably, he navigated the complexities of group dynamics without letting personal interests interfere, a testament to his selflessness and dedication to the collective vision. Moreover, Franklin's loyalty stands as an exemplary trait that merits acknowledgement. His unwavering commitment to his childhood friend Otis Williams, even during tumultuous periods within the group, showcased a rare and admirable fidelity. In a landscape where egos often clash, Franklin's steadfast allegiance to the group's leadership underscored his commitment to the shared journey. Delving into the narrative of Melvin Franklin's life reveals a testament to resilience and the triumph over numerous obstacles on the path to achieving legendary status and respect within the music industry. His upbringing and the values instilled in him played a pivotal role in shaping the man behind the iconic bass voice. Born on October 12, 1942, in Montgomery, Alabama, David Melvin English came into the world to Rose English, affectionately known as Mama Rose. At the tender age of 17, Rose, a teenage mother, navigated the challenges of raising young David, whose biological father was the preacher of the English family's church in Mobile. Tragically, his conception resulted from non-consensual relations, as revealed by his mother. Following David's birth, Rose English entered a new chapter in her life, marrying Willard Franklin and relocating to Detroit. However, David's upbringing took a different trajectory, as his grandmother insisted on assuming the responsibility of raising him. Despite the separation, family ties remained strong, and David eventually joined his mother and stepfather in Detroit in 1952 at the age of 10. As a teenager, David embraced his stepfather's surname, becoming known as Melvin Franklin, a pivotal moment that marked the beginning of his journey in the music industry. Engaging in the rich musical landscape of Detroit, Melvin Franklin became a noteworthy member of various local singing groups. Among these collaborations were the Voice Masters, where he shared the stage with luminaries such as Lamont Dozier and David Ruffin, and frequently collaborated with Richard Street. In a significant turn of events in 1959, the Voice Masters, featuring Melvin Franklin, signed with Anna Records, a label co-founded by Anna Gordy, sister to the influential Barry Gordy. Under this label, the group produced a series of impactful singles, including the notable tracks Needed and Hope and Pray, showcasing Franklin's early artistry. 
Throughout this period, Melvin Franklin formed close bonds with his fellow musicians, affectionately referring to Richard Street and David Ruffin as his cousins, despite the absence of a blood relation. These connections served as the building blocks for the collaborative spirit that would later define Franklin's contributions to the legendary group, The Temptations. Adding a poignant touch to his personal life, Melvin Franklin's romantic pursuit of Mary Wilson, a future supreme singer, offers a glimpse into the interconnected relationships within Detroit's vibrant musical landscape during that era. In the year 1958, Otis Williams, who shared the halls of Detroit's Northwestern High School with Melvin Franklin, initiated the formation of his own singing group named Otis Williams and the Siberians. The group was on the verge of negotiating a recording contract with the esteemed record producer Johnny May Matthews for the production of singles. However, a significant development occurred when Arthur Walton, the group's bass singer, decided to depart to complete his high school education. To address this vacancy, Otis Otis Williams turned to Melvin Franklin, whom he remembered from their shared musical pursuits with the voice masters. Spotting Franklin in a nearby neighborhood, Williams approached him with an offer to join the group as their bass singer. In response, Franklin, displaying a blend of caution and respect, stated, Well, I don't know you. You have to ask my mama. Williams took the initiative to explain the situation to Rose Franklin, Melvin's mother, who in turn granted her approval for her son to become a part of the group. In a strategic move to enhance the vocal dynamics of the group, Franklin also played a pivotal role in bringing Richard Street on board to replace Bernard Plain, the departing lead singer. This restructuring marked the transformation of the Siberians into a new entity, now rebranded as Otis Williams and the Distance. The collective talent of Williams Franklin Street, along with Elbridge Al Bryant and James P. Wee Crawford, manifested in recording sessions at Matthews Northern Records. Noteworthy singles such as Come On, 1959, and and All Right 1960 were released under this collaborative effort. Concurrently during this period, Melvin Franklin briefly pursued higher education, attending Wayne State University. However, challenges arose in the form of a dispute over royalties with Johnny May Matthews, leading to the termination of the group's contract with Northern Records. By the year 1960, the lineup of the distance underwent changes, with Street departing the group, resulting in a reduction to a trio. Following the loss of the distance name, the remaining members of the group strategically aligned themselves with Paul Williams and Eddie Kendricks, culminating in the formation of a new musical entity known as the Elgins. This transformative collaboration bore fruit in March 1961 when the Elgins secured a pivotal recording contract with the iconic Motown Records. Under the visionary guidance of Motown, the group underwent a transformative name change, emerging as none other than The Temptations. As an integral member of The Temptations, Melvin Franklin earned the affectionate nickname Blue among his bandmates, a moniker inspired by his fondness for the Italian song Nel Blu Dipinto di Blu, also known as Volare in English. Franklin's unwavering commitment to The Temptations and his deep, resonant vocals contributed significantly to establishing him as one of the most renowned bass singers in the realm of music. Notably, Melvin Franklin and Otis Williams stood as the only founding members who remained steadfast in their commitment to The Temptations throughout the group's storied history. Franklin's distinctive voice became a hallmark of the Temptations' sound, with his deep vocals leaving an indelible mark on the group's signature style. While primarily known for his prowess as a bass singer, Melvin Franklin showcased his versatility by taking on featured leads in select songs. Notable among these performances are I Truly Truly Believe, from the album The Temptations' Wish It Would Rain, 1968, Silent Night from Give Love at Christmas, 1980, the Prophet from A Song For You, 1975, and his iconic live performance number, Old Man River. Beyond his lead vocal contributions, Franklin played a pivotal role in enriching The Temptations' musical tapestry by delivering memorable ad-libs, harmonies, and, during the psychedelic soul era, distinct sections of the main verses. His artistic imprint is particularly evident in the notable line and the band played on, which he delivered with impactful resonance in The Temptations' 1970 hit single, Ball of Confusion, That's What the World Is Today. In the autumn of 1978, Melvin Franklin faced a harrowing incident that significantly impacted both his personal and professional life. While attempting to thwart a carjacking outside a West Hollywood hair salon, Franklin was shot in the hand and leg. The unfortunate incident unfolded when he left his vehicle running while engaged in conversation with a female friend. 
During the struggle with the carjacker, the assailant recognized Franklin as a member of the Temptations, subsequently pushing him out of the car before speeding away. This violent encounter, unfortunately, prevented Franklin's participation in the Temptations' scheduled tour of Poland, which at the time was still situated behind the Iron Curtain. In his absence, Otis Williams stepped in to assume Franklin's bass parts during his recovery. Beyond his illustrious career with The Temptations, Melvin Franklin also made notable contributions as a voice actor. In 1984, he lent his voice to the character Wheels in the animated series Pole Position, showcasing his versatility beyond the realm of music. In recognition of his significant contributions to the world of music, Melvin Franklin received induction into the prestigious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989 as a valued member of The Temptations. However, adversity struck again during the summer of 1994 when Franklin faced a health crisis. Rushed to the hospital, he was diagnosed with necrotizing fasciitis, a severe bacterial infection. In a bid to save his life, surgeons operated on Franklin's arm. Due to his compromised immune system, System, he remained at risk for remission following the procedure. Despite these health challenges, the legacy of the Temptations endured, and in September 1994, the group received a star on the illustrious Hollywood Walk of Fame. Tragically, Melvin Franklin's final recording with The Temptations was the poignant Life is But a Dream, featured on the album For Lovers Only, released in January 1995. Following Franklin's passing, Ray Davis took on the mantle within The Temptations. Melvin Franklin's personal and professional life was marked by both triumphs and health challenges. In his second marriage to Kimberly, the couple had five children. However, in 1968, Franklin faced a significant health hurdle when diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Determined to continue his musical career, he combated the symptoms with cortisone, which, over time, left his immune system vulnerable to other infections and health issues. This ongoing battle with health included the development of diabetes in the early 1980s and later the contraction of necrotizing fasciitis. Despite these adversities, Franklin's resilience and commitment to his craft were evident as he carried oxygen tanks with him while on tour to manage his various illnesses. In January 1995, during the recording of the album For Lovers Only, signs of health complications emerged when bleeding from Franklin's ankle was noticed by fellow band members Ali Ali Woodson and Otis Williams. He was taken home for recovery, but on February 17, 1995, he fell into a coma and remained unconscious. Tragically, on February 23, 1995, Melvin Franklin passed away from heart failure at Cedar sinai Medical Center at the age of 52. His funeral drew widespread attendance, with the legendary Smokey Robinson paying tribute to Franklin through the heartfelt rendition of the song, Really Gonna Miss You, a moment later recreated in the Temptations miniseries. Franklin found his final resting place at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. Even after his passing, Melvin Franklin continued to receive posthumous recognition for his outstanding contributions to the music industry. In February 2013, he was honored with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award as a member of The Temptations. Furthermore, on August 17, Franklin was inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame, further solidifying his enduring legacy as an integral member of The Temptations. Melvin Franklin's role in The Temptations remains an indelible part of the group's history. His deep, resonant vocals, unwavering commitment, and contributions to their timeless music have left an enduring impact. The extraordinary journey of The Temptations, enriched by Franklin's presence, continues to be celebrated, ensuring that his legacy as a key figure in the world of rhythm and blues and soul music will never fade from memory. Established in 1960, The Temptations emerged as an iconic American vocal group, renowned for their seamless harmonies and meticulously choreographed performances. They stood as one of the preeminent figures in soul music during the 1960s and 1970s, leaving an indelible mark on the musical landscape. The Temptations were predominantly affiliated with Motown Records, where they recorded a vast array of their timeless hits. Throughout their illustrious career, the Temptations experienced shifts in personnel, yet their unparalleled popularity persisted. At the zenith of their acclaim, the group boasted a lineup that included key members such as Otis Williams, Paul Williams, Melvin Franklin, Eddie Kendricks, David Ruffin, and Dennis Edwards. 
The Temptations' journey began in 1961 when they inked a significant deal with Motown Records. Originally known as the Elgins, the group's formation was a product of the amalgamation of two prominent vocal groups, hailing from Detroit, The Primes, and The Distance. This fusion not only laid the foundation for the Temptations' distinctive sound, but also catapulted them into the forefront of the burgeoning Motown music scene. As they embarked on their musical odyssey, the Temptations' artistry transcended traditional boundaries, earning them a dedicated fan base and critical acclaim. Their contributions to the soul genre, characterized by rich harmonies and dynamic performances, solidified their legacy as trailblazers in American music history. In their formative years, the Temptations enjoyed early early chart success, driven by the creative brilliance of Smokey Robinson and the distinctive falsetto vocals of Eddie Kendricks. This era, marked by hits like The Way You Do The Things You Do, 1964, My Girl, 1964, Get Ready, 1966, Ain't Too Proud To Beg, 1966, and I Wish It Would Rain, 1967, showcased the group's ability to deliver soulful and melodious performances that resonated with audiences worldwide. A significant turning point for The Temptations occurred in 1964 with the addition of David Ruffin, ushering in a new phase of the group's illustrious career. This period saw a remarkable succession of chart-topping hits, with Ruffin's soulful vocals taking center stage. Notable songs from this era include the aforementioned Ain't Too Proud to Beg and I Wish It Would Rain, which further solidified The Temptations' position as leading figures in the soul music landscape. As the group evolved, Smokey Robinson gradually relinquished his role as the principal songwriter, making way for the collaboration with the accomplished writer-producer Norman Whitfield. Under Whitfield's guidance, The Temptations delved into a more socially conscious musical direction. The transition was marked by the departure of David Ruffin in 1968 due to issues related to drug use and missed engagements. During this pivotal time, the musical landscape was undergoing a transformation, with funk emerging as a dominant sound. The Temptations adapted to this shift, aligning their artistic direction with the evolving musical trends. Norman Whitfield played a crucial role in this evolution, introducing innovative recording techniques such as elevating the bass in the mix and incorporating elaborate orchestral arrangements. This not only reflected the broader musical currents of the time, but also positioned the Temptations as pioneers in exploring new sonic territories within the soul and funk genres. The mid-1970s marked a period of significant transition for the Temptations, characterized by frequent changes in personnel and a decline in chart-topping hits. Following David Ruffin's departure, Eddie Kendricks, another integral member, embarked on a solo career in 1971. The same year saw the resignation of Paul Williams due to deteriorating health, attributed to excessive drinking. Tragically, Paul Williams passed away two years after leaving the group, ushering the temptations into a phase of reduced output. The absence of top-notch producers, coupled with the challenges of navigating personnel changes, contributed to a decline in the group's prominence. In 1976, The Temptations parted ways with Motown Records, their longtime home, and signed a brief contract with Atlantic Records. The albums released during this period including Here to Tempt You, 1977, and Bear Back, 1978, failed to replicate the success of their earlier work. Facing setbacks at Atlantic, The Temptations terminated their association with the label in 1979. In a pivotal moment, they reconnected with their roots, meeting with Smokey Robinson and Barry Gordy, the visionary figures behind Motown. This reunion resulted in The Temptations re-signing with Motown in 1980, marking a symbolic return to the label that played a crucial role in shaping their iconic career. They reclaimed their status as hitmakers with chart-topping singles such as Treat Her Like a Lady. Bolstered by the unwavering support of Motown, the iconic group navigated the musical landscape of the 1980s with finesse, reaffirming their relevance and enduring appeal. As the music scene evolved into the 1990s, The Temptations continued their impressive run with the single Stay, seamlessly aligning with the neo-soul revival period. Their ability to adapt to changing musical currents demonstrated the timeless quality of their artistry, ensuring that their hits resonated across generations. The enduring impact of The Temptations was formally recognized in 1989, when they were inducted into the prestigious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, a testament to their lasting influence on the landscape of popular music. Subsequently, in 2013, the Recording Academy honored The Temptations with a well-deserved Lifetime Achievement Award, 
acknowledging the profound and lasting contributions they made to the world of music. In a remarkable convergence of music and theater, the story of The Temptations served as the inspirational foundation for the jukebox musical Ain't Too Proud, which debuted on Broadway in March 2019. This theatrical production provided a compelling narrative journey through the group's storied history, earning 11 Tony Award nominations at the 73rd Tony Awards and ultimately winning for Best Choreography. The success of Ain't Too Proud not only paid tribute to The Temptations' enduring legacy, but also introduced their timeless music to a new generation of audiences. As The Temptations continued performing and recording into the 21st century, their enduring legacy remained firmly intact. Their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award, and the success of Ain't Too Proud underscored their unparalleled impact on the cultural fabric of music. The Temptations story is not just one of chart-topping hits, but also a testament to the indomitable spirit that has solidified their place in the annals of musical history, ensuring that their legacy will never be forgotten. That's it for today. Until next time, bye.